Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, we're discussing foreign land ownership in Thailand. So this is land ownership by foreigners in Thailand. The reason for the video, we've discussed this a lot recently. I did a video about a week ago where I said, hey, viewers, I'd love to have some feedback. What would you like me to talk about on this channel? We're coming off of dealing with all of this shutdown stuff. Frankly, I don't feel like there's such an urgent need to have somebody talking about every little thing that's going on in immigration at the moment. Thailand's pretty well reopened. Things are moving pretty smoothly. So, you know, I kind of want to talk about something else. So I was kind of curious what the viewers thought. Now, this comment, uh, I, I may be misreading it, but I kind of, I, I kind of looked askance when I read this comment. I'll explain why here in a moment. Let me quote, uh, read it. Quote, explain, parentheses, with details, close parentheses, how, how so many foreigners apparently successfully hold land all over Thailand. So I, I always love when I'm giving out free information to be told how I need to be giving it out. So the explain with details, it's like, well, I'll explain as best I can. Uh, I may be reading that wrong. Maybe that wasn't the tone. I, I always am kind of hesitant to ever kind of take any kind of, I never take umbrage, but be sort of perturbed by something I read in a comment because I, I'll, I've talked to people that have made comments on stuff and I read it a certain way and they meant, no, my tone to that meant this. And this may be not trying to tell me how, you know, the cow eat the cabbage. They're just asking me what they want to know. Uh, but okay, explain with details how so many foreigners apparently successfully hold land all over Thailand. Well, let me tell you this as detailed as I can, they don't. They don't. They may have some structure, color of law or otherwise, that allows them some level of control over land in Thailand. And as we've discussed in other videos, you need to be very careful with that because nominees are illegal in Thailand. So any sort of scrutiny by relevant authorities that would determine that there's a nominee structure at play could result in that corporation being dissolved and the land is cheating back to the state. I've done videos on it, it happens. They do go after that. Uh, we've talked about it before. Uh, meanwhile, uh, and this is kind of a common one, uh, much more common in the past, and I don't mean to make light of this or anything, but you know, a lot of folks came here for years and thought that, oh, well, I own this piece of property with my wife. And one thing I would hear over and over again was, well, we went down to the land office and I signed a document that said, you know, I'm also a co-owner. No, in point of fact, you signed a document that said you disclaimed all ownership over the property pursuant to Thai statutory code requiring that of a foreign spouse of a Thai national who's taking ownership over Thai land. Because Thai land laws are very strict. Foreigners can't own land in Thailand except under extremely limited circumstances requiring a substantial amount of government oversight, scrutiny, and approval. So, uh, yeah, no. Uh, long story short, they don't in most cases. Meantime, there's also long-term leases, which, again, foreigners may either mistake or over-exaggerate and embellish and say that they own. In point of fact, they might not. And at the same time, there's also what's known as usufructs. Usufructs, uh, basically kind of the equivalent of what we call a life estate in the common law parlance, basically life usage of property. Again, not illegal, perfectly, perfectly possible under Thai law to have one owner grant a usufruct, lifetime usage of a piece of property to a foreign national. That's possible as well. So again, uh, with regard to how are all these foreigners owning this land, well, they're not. I mean, that's just the fact of it. I'm not trying to be blunt and I'm not trying to, you know, sound difficult or smug or anything of that nature. It, the fact of it is every time I've ever done due diligence, somebody's saying, oh, so-and-so says they own this, I'm looking to buy it from them. By the time we do the due diligence, there's, there's either not in any way the ownership that was initially described or it's something substantially different, but yes, that foreigner may have some either ownership interest or, or rights, I shouldn't say ownership interest, but rights in that property, a lease, for example, a usufruct, or they may, for example, be married to somebody that does. And again, these corporate structures, theoretically possible, but as I've said, if they're not 
properly constructed, and even and proper construction, that's kind of a term of art. What exactly is proper construction? It's going to be circumstantially dependent. But long story short, again, even in the most properly constructed corporate structure, the corporation owns the property. That foreign national is never going to be any more than 49% under any set of circumstances. So from a true ownership standpoint, yeah, control, there may be some level there, but ownership, no, it just doesn't exist under those circumstances. 